Friday, April 4th in 1997, about 5 p.m. in the afternoon, Anthony Martinez and his younger brother and three of his friends were playing in the backyard here. Anthony lived back here in the apartment complex back here. And they were playing, doing what the kids do. And they were suddenly approached by a man walking this way. The man was going back and forth like he was looking for something, kind of caught the attention of the kids. They were actually next door with the neighbor. They were actually inside of a gated yard. And the man, from what we've been told, approached the fence. The man got to about right here and waved the children over. Um, all five kids came over, and the man proceeded to pull a, uh, a picture out, out of his uh, pocket. And the picture was uh, of a cat. He tells the kids that uh, he's looking for his cat. He's lost him. The cat's around here. And then offers him a, a dollar to help look for the cat. Um, about that time, one of the kids, young, very sharp gal, didn't feel too good about what was happening, felt very uneasy about this stranger who had approached him. And uh, she had reached over and grabbed a younger child, uh, I believe it was her younger brother, and uh, made the kid go inside. And both kids go back inside. Anthony, Anthony's uh, younger brother, and the third child stayed out here playing um, and agreed to help, find, help look for this guy's cat. Both of my sons and the friend that we had over came out from the neighbor's house into the alley. The kids come out the fence right here, and the man stays about right here in this area here. The kids go down the alleyway here and spend about the next five minutes in the bushes, behind the dumpsters, looking for this cat. Looked around a little bit. The man promised him uh, money. Of course, they didn't find any cat, and they come on back and approach this man asking for their money. They feel pretty good that, uh, you know, they've earned their money. I'm not sure exactly what happened as far as, you know, when he, but I know that they said that he got kind of nervous about because the time was stretching out, and, um, did, just panicked because there was going to be people coming around or, and just just grab for him. And, and, go, and goes for Anthony's younger brother, reaches for him. Uh, it appears that uh, Anthony's younger brother got the jump on him, saw that something wrong was about to happen, and jumped back. Uh, the guy was able, was, uh, able to grab a hold of, of uh, the kid's shoe and actually pulling the shoe off. He ended up getting his shoe off. I don't know what the whole situation or how exactly, but I know that he went for my younger son first. He squirms and gets away. The other child over here runs off. Anthony, probably thinking, you know, knowing something was wrong, uh, steps in to either protect his brother or the other child, and in the process gets caught by the man who basically grabs him and sticks a knife to his to Anthony. It must have been right at the moment that he grabbed Tony because um, we heard someone yelling, and the yelling was coming closer, even though we couldn't make out what they were saying. Throws him in the back seat of his car and drives off. They would just turn right here and turn left on Chestnut, and that was the last that Anthony was seeing. The hardest thing about having Tony being gone is the fact that one day he was here, one day he was gone, and you don't have anyone, you don't have anything to say. This, this is why you have no one to say, no reason. You can't point it or go somewhere or say, you know, I understand who did this. You have. It's so hard to have your hun your son just go and not have anyone, no one to say, or no. Just nothing. There's no one to say who did it. There's nothing that you can do but just try to go on, you know. It makes it really hard. And I, I just know that there's someone probably in his family that lives near him and knows that, or at least suspects that there's something different or something, something about the case and the person that you know and you just know that he must have something to do with her. It just all seems so strange. If anyone knows anything at all, if anyone knows or even suspects or even thinks even the smallest detail or just a feeling that someone you know or live by knows anything about it or had anything to do with it, if you can call in, it's very important to the family. It's very important.
important to keep another child safe so their family doesn't have to go through what we have to go through. And it's, it's always anonymous. There's always, you know, they'll never ask who you are and they never want to know who you are. They just want to know anything that we can find, any, any way that we can find the person that, that did this to my 